Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. TMP, that's what all the cool kids say. Uh, very excited to be back, of course. Uh, we are starting properly. We are digging in Series 11, Episode 2. Um, I love doing the old episodes uh, and I also love doing... It feels more immediate doing these episodes. It feels almost like I'm commentating on a sport. I don't, I don't really like sports. I don't know if you can tell. The closest I get to sports is taskmaster uh so we're chatting about series 11 episode 2 of taskmaster today if you've not seen it for god's sake go and watch it now then come back and listen to this fun chat and deconstruction and sports commentary about it um i'm well aware that with sports you don't watch the game and then listen to the commentary afterwards i may not know about sports but i know that and our special guest this week is jamali maddox i don't think we did this with series 10 where we had a contestant from the series on to talk about going out, but we thought it might be a fun way of doing it. Uh, so Jamali Maddox is going to be chatting through series 11, episode two with us today. A uh, few bits to chat about. Taskmaster Bleeped, which is the more family-friendly version of Taskmaster, is available on all four. We had a lot of questions asking about that. But if you go on to all four, it's called Taskmaster Bleeps. So you will be able to watch those episodes uh, without any of the Rudies in. Uh, and, you know, now and again, there are Rudies. If you want more Rudies, they tend to put the really rude stuff in little extra deleted content on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Taskmaster. Go and check that out. Also, go and look at the Taskmaster store. Go back, watch old episodes. Do whatever you want. They're all available on all four. So let's crack on. Let's have a chat to the wonderful Jamali Maddox of Series 11, Episode 2 of Taskmaster. See you on the other side. Welcome, Jamali, to the Taskmaster podcast. Hey, man. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm okay. I'm not bad. You know, just good. living my life, just watching Taskmaster for a living, really. How are you? I'm good, man. You know, it's, it's a weird question to ask in these times, isn't it? It's it sort is. of like, is it? Because it's... it's, it's, cause it's uh... It kind of goes past the kind of the niceties of just like, yeah, you know, I'm good. It's just kind of like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know it, really, it really yeah. does. Fine means something different now, I've noticed. So before yes. this, someone would say, I'm fine. You'd be like, oh, they're fine. And now if someone says, I'm fine, you go, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's it's much more normalized. Where back in the day, before back in the day, before this, if someone's like, yeah. you know what? I'm feeling really shit. You kind of go, oh, damn, like, you're right. And if someone says they're feeling shit now, you just go, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a reasonable way to feel right now. Yeah, yeah that's no, the baseline. Yeah. That yeah, is yeah, the baseline yeah, yeah. for everyone. We feel for shit. For real, bro, for real, for um, real. Bro. But I think that's why people have people have really gone into Taskmaster hard in the last year because it yeah. is, it's so, it's so silly uh, and it's so sort of removed from anything serious. Did you find that doing it? Was it a nice, was it a nice break from everything going on in the world? A hundred percent, yeah. And you know what? I'll be honest with you, because when I got offered it, it wasn't that I was hesitant to do it, because I always was like, yeah, I would do it. But yeah. I had that thing in the back of my head. I was like, is it kind of what, is it the right tone for something? You know, is it like, is it kind of the thing I want to be doing right now? And, you know, yeah. but I'll be honest with you, man, like it was such a blessing to just be silly. Because yeah. it's been such a long time since I've been able to be silly and just, and have fun with that and not, and not take yourself mad serious and you know and and so yeah because i guess it's a it's a different tone to stuff yeah. you've done in the past bearing in mind you yeah. know you've done documentaries where you've gone around talking to hate groups and stuff in america yeah. and this is this is not that i mean alex has obviously no. got some awful awful hatred uh opinions but um i mean listen oh well, he told me don't get it twisted <laughs> don't it? He, he showed me a few youtube documentaries if you get what i'm saying <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's just a guy's voice saying, "Have you ever wondered?" Did you go, "Okay, this is gonna be," but no, it's um, yeah, man, it was, and, it, and you know what? Like even just like behind the scenes stuff, I don't know how much behind the scenes stuff you want to hear, but like it was just, it's just a nice crew. It runs smooth. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it really a, and, it was, and it was just generally like a fun show to do. Like I remember like being excited to go work again, and that was, you know, but it was fun as fuck, man. Like I can't even front, man. It's a fun, it's a fun show, and I understand why people so into it and i think that was kind of the thing that threw me off a bit is i didn't yeah. realize cause i know of the show and stuff but i didn't realize how into it people were oh yeah i mean there's a podcast about it yeah that's how I, into it people are yeah. people people just hoover up any taskmaster content they're I did, I, obsessive i did a joke on my twitter where i was like um i'll be on taskmaster tonight, tonight giving minimal effort because you know <laughs> it's, that's my my character is i kind of i don't really care too cool for school like that's kind of the character yeah. i go for 
and and someone messaged me saying, "Don't ruin this for me." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh damn, this is intense, bro." When people were like, "Do not ruin," and it was so it was so much heart in that tweet of just like, "Please, yeah. don't ruin this." <laughs> this is all we have at the moment. Yeah, Please, with your, Jamal. With your nonchalantness. <laughs> yeah, but also I don't. I think. I think saying that you give minimal effort or that you're nonchalant is is a disservice to what you actually do because you oh, do yeah, have yeah, a yeah. yeah you you are putting effort in but you are doing it in your own way and yeah. also like that thing of you saying you were worried about the tone of the show and whether it was the sort of thing you should be doing Taskmaster's good in that you can bring your own tone yeah. to it right and yeah, that's yeah. that's what you do you've got that strong flavor right from the off and I absolutely yeah. love it yeah, I like that. And they, they, they give you time to be that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, because I mean, me and you have both done the panel shows and they're good and they're good, you know, and I've enjoyed doing them and, you know, but they're very much like bang, 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 bang. Like it's, yeah. you got you got to get in there, get what, get yourself across in uh, economy of words. Yes. Whereas this time it gives you time to breathe and, because some of them tasks, it's like, yeah, you got, you got, you know, you got a year to complete this task. <laughs> you, know <what> I'm <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like, it gives you such a long time and then you can really think about it and they give you a little, you know, and then you can sort of, um, and Greg and Alex are good and, you know, they sort of let you, you know, they sort of work out what you're doing and sort of play up to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, Greg, Greg, Greg you know, cause my whole thing was like, you know, insubordinate student and Greg kind of played yeah. up to that shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Which is fun. You know what I mean? It's fun to he sort did. of- He did. He very much- yeah, He's yeah, very yeah. much going with it so far yeah, because yeah, right yeah. from right from the off, you're quite antagonistic with Greg and Alex, <laughs> yeah, both of yeah. them. It's not like you take sides. You're during the no, tasks, no, no. you're pretty rude to Alex, especially in this episode. There's a great <laughs> moment where you just go, "What is your job?" Which is, <laughs> yeah. which is, I think I think everyone has wanted to ask Alex that in the past. What yeah. if you won't help me with this? Why are you here? Yeah, yeah, because there is like some frustrating moments because the thing about Alex is sometimes he'll help you and sometimes yeah. he won't. And there's no yeah. rhyme or reason behind no. it. And sometimes he'll help one of the other task members in the thing oh, that you mate. just asked him to do. And it's just like, so you just go, what is your job here? Like, I understand yeah. you the creator, but other than being the creator of this, what is your job here? We're all we're all enjoying your standoffs with Greg in the studio already. Yeah, because and my I pillow think, spinning, that kind of oh, thing. Oh, that, mate, people, the pillow people spinning. Were that, people were loving that pillow spinning. I've got to say, I've got to say, man. We'll do some emails at the end uh, at the end of the episode, oh, but uh, oh, oh. safe to say, when I put on Twitter that uh, we were having you on and to send in some email questions, they were ninety percent about the pillow spinning. Do you know what? That's the funny thing. I saw someone uh, tweet underneath it. They were like, um, get ready for the shutdown of, or to close down <laughs> because everyone's just going to be like, how do you spin yeah. pillows? <laughs> how do you spin the pillow? Yeah, um, right. I mean, yeah, let, let's talk about that quickly, actually, because I yeah, think sure. I think it's one of the biggest scoring travesties in Taskmaster history. It's I'm mental. Not, you know, I'm not taking Greg to task on it personally yet, but I think I will do because I cannot believe that that should have been five points straight away. It was so much more impressive than anything anybody else did. And what I did as well, and no one actually clocked, is I wasn't just spinning the pillow on my finger. I got one of those wooden mannequins. Yes, and I was spinning yeah, yeah. the pillow on a wooden mannequin. Yeah, like that's high level. You know, if there was a that's high pillow, level pillow spinning. Bro, I'm not. I'm listen. I'm not saying that I'm a pillow spinning world champion, but <laughs> do you know what I'm saying like I think I should go for the title. Like nobody yeah. has ever done that in the history of TV. Right, no. and then what he and then Lee just smashed together bananas and sandwiches. And then it was unedible <laughs> schlock. And then he went and then Greg sort of rubbed his chin and went, yeah, right, four points. I, I, I think that was that was madness. Yeah, that how, was madness. How badly that I got pointed on that. Like, and, and, you know, it's only when I rewatched it and I was watching it with someone and they just went, that's bullshit. And I went, God yeah. damn, yeah. No, it is bullshit, love. You're right. Look, you know, I, I think Greg knows how to get people talking. That's the only yeah. explanation I can think of. <laughs> it was mad. Yeah. I, definitely should, I definitely should have got more points for that, but, you know. Did you watch? Um, had you seen much of Taskmaster before you before you did it, or was it Honestly, a total nah, surprise? I seen clips. <laughs> Real talk, bro. I saw clips. Like you know, yeah. and it's like because you know, because I mean, the thing is, like uh, you know, it can be everyone, every, all comedians pretty much know all comedians, or yeah. it's always there's, there's there's a one degree of separation. Like you know, everybody knows everybody somehow. So yeah. I knew I knew you did it. I knew you know, and I know a bunch of people that did it. And I think we had spoke about it briefly, and yeah. everyone seemed that they liked the show. And I saw clips online. But to say I actually sat down and watched the show, nah. I don't think it was, you know, it's not really a show marketed for me. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not really something that me and the man that are watching, like, yo, putting that Taskmaster <laughs> do still. 
Do you know what I'm saying, fam? What, what <laughs> madness is in Alex's mind this week? Like, it's, you know, it's just not really a mandem show, but like, and I, you know. But do you, think think it could, do you think it could be? Do you think 100%, 100%. There's, yeah, there's, there's an it's option just, for it to spread? Oh, mate, 100%, mate. All you got to get is like, you've got to get Big Nasty as a new host. Yeah. Right. Repackage it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah, there, yeah. there is, there is an option for it to spread to a new audience. Oh, you just 100%. have to fire Greg and hire Big Nasty instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, isn't it? But like, you know, what I'm saying, like, there, there's definitely a way of making that uh, show up. But anyway, but um, yeah, man, that uh, I had never really seen it. Now, like, I, I so I've seen clips on YouTube, but it it kind of doesn't um, translate but, if you don't watch the whole show. Like, you have to kind of see, experience the whole show to really know what's going down. So when I got there, totally it was a complete surprise. Like, I was like, I I, I generally don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I think that's what I think that's what's good about the show as well. In the in the lineups they pick is that there's clearly some people who have seen every episode. Name mm. and no names me. Um, but then there's people who are sort of a bit a bit lost when they're dumped into the middle of it and yeah. it, there's no right way of doing it it's just fun to see how it all plays out let's let i mean let's get straight into it then let's let's start with the prize task uh, of yeah. best drinking vessel yeah. um let's talk about you straight away because it was it was one point because you just <laughs> brought you just brought in a plastic cup jamali what what were you th- what were you thinking mate Honestly, um, my thought process was, is, you know, listen, you know, me and you both does a show. It pays well, but I don't think it pays well enough for homework. <laughs> and I, I, I feel offended by that. Like, I feel offended that you're making me do extra work outside of the actual filming. Like, I think once the filming block's done, the filming block's done. Yeah. And I just, you know, I just don't feel as if that I should be made <laughs> to do extra work. So when they said, what's your best drinking vessel? I was like, a plastic cup. And it plastic is kind cup, of, yeah. and it is, and it is technically the best answer. Like they, well, like plastic yeah, cups have been invented specifically <laughs> around the world. Cause even like cutlery, you can debate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can okay, debate yeah. chopsticks. Cause you can, you got chopsticks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Got, and that's the only other one, but you know, I wish I had more examples. You got chopsticks, <laughs> you got hands. <laughs> and then, but um, you know, and with pla- but a cup has been replicated throughout cultures. Where if you, if you're answering the question, what is the best cup? That is the best cup. And also, I was trying to be um, I was trying to be quite uh, you know antagonistic to Greg because I knew it sure. I mean, that definitely came across. But also <laughs> that that argument you just gave there of the cup being replicated across all cultures, I really liked that. Yeah. I don't know if you said that in the studio on the night. It did not make the edit, right? Yeah, and I didn't say that in the studio on the it's night. It's more no. convincing, Jamali, rather than your yeah. other argument, which I believe was, and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm not playing your bullshit game anymore. <laughs> um, which I, is incredible I, for episode two to come yeah. up to say, I'm not doing it anymore in episode two. I, I've, I've, just got, I've just got a problem with authority. <laughs> So yeah. whenever I'm faced we can with all, authority, we can all see that. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I'm faced with it, I just have to, I have to combat it. So it's like, even though yeah. I feel like I was right. You yeah. know, I just, I just can't do it. So it's like, yeah. So for me, it was just to antagonize it. But I, you know, and generally, I just couldn't think of a better answer. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I like guess if you are looking at it in terms of, in terms of the best drinking vessel, as in the most functional, mm-hmm. yours, yours is probably should be up there, really. Thank but you. I think it was the fact that you just went, yeah, just a plastic cup. I'm not playing a bullshit <laughs> game anymore. That's never going to work with Greg. Yeah, and I love my impression of the show is that, what was my impression? So I'm like, it's an ostrich wearing a hat and I thought yeah. it was like my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Too whimsical. Yeah, you just yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. the whimsy of it. Yeah, yeah, I talk about the whimsy of it. But yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I did, yeah. And also, you In know. fact, I think your impression of it was just stroking your chin and going, ooh, vessel. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it was kind of like a, uh, you know, and also, also, I thought we would, and before, just for comical reasons, I thought it would be more funny just to cut down the line and just oh, be, sure. and just be like, it's a cup in it. Yeah, so look, you've that. gone with you've gone with the with the comic potential rather than getting the points, which is oh fine. yeah, 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 yeah. Even though, um, even though, you know, I didn't realize how much I wanted to win the show until I was there. Oh really? So you I only swear th- down, I had no interest. Because if you ask me, if you say to me, um, you know, if so, how many panel shows you done about run right about it? How many? What in terms of indi- yeah, individual filmings yeah, yeah. or yeah, yeah, yeah. individual or filmings? A hundred. How yeah. many? How many have you won of show like panel shows? Oh well, normally it doesn't really matter, does it? But that's yes, the point I'm, I'm making. Is yeah, it doesn't. I don't matter. know. So I was going in there with that mentality of you know, oh, I, it's a panel show. Why would I? I don't care about winning until I got there, and I was like, no, this is different to any other thing I've done. I need to win. Do you know yeah. What I mean? 
Does that make sense though? Like, I'm and you'd already filmed like, the task, so it's basically too late by that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always too late by that. But I just, I realized once I got to the studio, I was like, oh, yeah. no, I actually kind of want to win this and that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I kind of actually want to, you know, I think, Interesting. I think I would like to be the season winner on this one. Actually. That would be fun to see that see that play out throughout the season of your yeah, your yeah, increased yeah. competitive nature. Oh, you see, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, it definitely comes across, not to spoil it, but it definitely. Right. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> the breakdown um, is coming. Lee uh, Lee brought in uh, Simon Cowell's mug from mm. Britain's Got Talent. You know, mm. also a functional drinking vessel. But I'd say it sort of it should mark it down that Simon Cowell's used it. Yes, a hundred percent. Thank you. And I don't believe the story. To be honest with you, I think Do he's not. lying. I think he's lying. Do you think he's bought a mug off the Britain's Got Talent website? I think I think the runners have bought a mug off the Britain's Got Talent <laughs> website. <laughs> Even I worse. Came, yeah, I think the production budget. <laughs> Paid for the <laughs> yeah, and paid for that mug. I think Lee's a liar, man. Because you see, huge conspiracy theory. You seen episode one, yeah, bro. We, we me and Lee started throwing buckets at each other. Yeah, like, Lee, 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 Lee has this unsustainable level to win. <laughs> like, yeah, he would lie, like a hundred percent. Well, there we go. Lee branded a liar. Um, yeah. Sarah's uh, cup was something her daughter made. Now this is the opposite of a functional cup, right? So yeah, it was yeah. a a cup from her daughter's pottery class. There was a great big hole in the side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still got three points. I I, I would sympathy argue vote. with that. Sympathy vote. Yeah, I'll go for the sympathy on that. Like I I I I'll say sympathy vote. So I mean, we say that a lot. I like I, even though I'm trying to play the mean character, I really like Sarah, and I don't want to be too mean. Yeah, yeah <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but no, um, I yeah, I don't think that should have got three. But you know, Greg 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 has a weird way of of deciding these points. Sometimes he just kind of he tickles his whims and that. So. You know, I think I honestly, I think plastic cup should have got. I don't think I should have got five points. I think I should have got two or three points. I I came into this discussion with you thinking, like the notes I've made have said that it's scored pretty correctly. I would have swapped Lee and Sarah, maybe, yeah, I would have put yeah, okay. Sarah That's lower it. than Lee, um, but I would have put you at one point. But after you told me that argument about cups in different cultures and how it's the most functional cup. I'm well on board with you, Jamali, but oh. unfortunately, it was just the way you presented it. That's that's half the key with the prize task. Yeah, I, I know. I kind of went in a bit. <laughs> I think we went a bit headstrong, innit? Oh, well. You went in a bit headstrong. Uh, yeah. Mike's Mike's was uh, a whittled spoon, so I think you always get extra points on Taskmaster for making something yourself. Yeah. Um, but th- this is a very Mike Wozniak prize because he toss- tosses around terms like love spoon as if everyone's heard of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it turned yeah, into man. more of a love spoon. Like yeah. we don't, we don't know what I had to look love spoon up. Turns no out, no one knew a, what that meant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no one knows what that means <laughs> except him. But he's, he's got this weird way of saying things that you don't know what it is, but you kind of yeah. know once he said it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. No, he's got this weird way of saying things, and you kind of go, I don't know what that word means, but I know that you're saying it completely correct. Yeah, it, everything <laughs> make, weird stuff makes sense in his persona. A hundred percent, man. He's he's like you know when you get sent to do a, like a stand up gig and they'll put you up in a weird Airbnb because it's the cheapest. <laughs> he's like someone who owns one of those. Like you turn yeah, yeah. up, you know, come in. All right, take your yeah, shoes yeah. off. Uh, we yeah, lock the doors yeah, at ten, yeah. and uh, that's the wall of love spoons. Don't touch them. Yeah, and he really wants to chat to you a long time, and then he goes, "Oh, so what yeah. are you doing? Okay, comedian. Okay, that's all right. Do you know this guy you've never heard of? Do you know him? Okay." But uh, yeah, no, Mike, Mike, definitely, man. Mike's got one of them minds where, especially when it comes to like the prize task, I think he's always going to be a good one at that because he's just yeah. got that really. He's just got such an interesting mind. Fascinating guy. Yeah. Um, Charlotte, Charlotte won the five points with uh, her grandfather's tankard that has a glass bottom. I was a big fan of this because there's a bit of backstory. Always helps, mm. I think. Do you think do you think that was better than the whittled spoon? See, I don't. Well, it was a better drinking vessel if okay. we're using yeah, your yeah. metric yeah, of it yeah, actually yeah. being a good drinking vessel because it's a mm-hmm. cup and cups are used in all cultures, Jamali. I don't mm-hmm. know if you know mm-hmm. that. No, um, and I, I it appealed to me because I uh, I like sort of big heavy metal Viking things, and that's the mm-hmm. sort of I think that's the sort of thing I would have brought in, but maybe with a skull on it or some flames or something. Yeah, it would have had a skull or some flames. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And you would have yeah. done the devil horns as you handed it. As I yeah exactly yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm always you know me Jamali. I'm always doing the devil horns. <laughs> doing it right yeah, now. Right. Yeah, but no, I, I yeah. So I think the I think that yeah. All right. I'm not going to get too mad because, again, you see, this is the competitive side. I was about to really yeah. debate you and then try and push my points up, it's even though late. you have no right to push them up. Well, I was about to say, I, you, well, if we're talking about that, then that means we're saying that the drinking vessel is the most important thing. So I should be bumped up to two points. And if anything, yeah. Mike Wozniak should have been put down to one point. 
Really? That's the thing. Yeah. Technically. And I, I've got no domain here. I can't I can't sort that out for you, Jabali. I'm so sorry. But, you know, I, I after your argument, I think maybe, maybe bump you up a point. But I think... I just think that there should be some type of after the fact. You know, like how if there's a football game and there's something that's happened, you can kind of, you know, debate it and you yeah. know, take it to the FIFA. I think there should be some type of protocol, but, you know. Well, I suppose in the first episode, you did get that extra point when oh, yeah, you yeah. proved to Greg that he couldn't spin the pillow. Maybe on this yeah. episode, later on in the show, they should have you should have been able to prove that you could drink from a plastic cup. That might yeah. have got you an extra Which point. Which was risky, because if he just started spinning it like perfectly, I would have... Amazing. Yeah, that would have... <laughs> <laughs> I would like a right mug. Yeah. That would have been zero points. It's a good prize. It's a good prize. You'd want it. You'd want it. Good price. It's a good prize. It's a good prize. I should have added historical information. <laughs> Task one proper. Uh, make that balloon hover untethered for 20 seconds. During the hovering, the top of the balloon must not be higher than your chin and the bottom must not be lower than your waist. Also, you must sneer throughout the 20 seconds. Fastest uh, wins. Your time starts now. How did how did you feel about tasks like this? Because this is the sort of one that always used to stress me out massively. I, I don't like these type of tasks. Like, I generally <laughs> don't. Like, it's just such a... Because it kind of... It, because I think some of the tasks are, there is no right answer. And yeah, I think they're the ones that I do better at because there is no right answer. It's just how you do it. Yeah, you know? and there's like a way. You know, there's there's a million ways to skin that cat. But this mm. one is. It felt like the whole time there was something I was missing. It felt like a trick question. Yeah, and I hate I hate trick questions. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and the whole time I'm just stressing out. I'm like, bro, this feels like a trick question, but I don't know what the answer is. Do you know what I'm saying though? It's all like you know, something's wet, but and also dry. And you got, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know. And I know it's so easy because I, I thought like it was going to be like, all you had to do was place your finger on top of it and it would have, do you know what yeah. I'm saying though? And like, it, that, yeah, that I do. really jars me out, man. It makes you feel, it makes you feel stupid. It's only did it really when I does. did them where, yeah, you're just like, oh, come on, there must be a good way. But having yeah. said that, you got the five points because you did it quickly. You got the woolly jumper, which was good. You, Alex did help you. He, you asked him a question about what sort of jumper would work. He told you a woolly jumper, even yeah. though later on in the task, you're saying, what's your job to him? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, you didn't, you did help, it. didn't help enough. You were slightly helped by the fact that Lee and Charlotte both lost their balloons almost immediately. Of course. I mean, because the thing is, is those balloons, especially like them, that they, they were ready to fly off so quickly, man. Yeah. Those helium balloons. Do you know what? I, do you know what? See, again, you're thinking about it. No, actually, that wouldn't have worked. Because I'm saying what, what I could have done was release the balloon of the helium and blow it back up with normal air. And that would have been yeah. easier for it to... You know, that's why. Let's see, but but it's all in hindsight, isn't it? That's what you. It's think, all right? in hindsight, that's and what when I should so, have done. You know? When I watched it back, yeah. well, I'm not watching it back. When I watched it, um, my <clears throat> my instinct was when I had time, when you're sitting on the sofa and you can think about it, and you're not in that moment. I, don't have I thought, you. could you pop the? You could pop the balloon. Would that make mm. it easier to make it hover? But then I think I was just being too clever because I don't think it would make it easier to make it hover. I think it would make it way harder. <laughs> Yeah, it would actually make it very hard, didn't it? Because I mean, you just have then you just have a piece of plastic. You've got to kind of make it hover in the air. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I think Stupid static idea. was the right way to go. <laughs> yeah, you Such a got, dumb idea. Were, yeah, it was a terrible idea, really. But, I would have ended up. I would have ended up popping it and putting it in water <laughs> and trying to claim that water was hovering. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but then you know, is that? But then that's the, that's that's the, that's, that's the annoying thing about it. Is, is that wrong? But then you got you had to keep it like a certain level as well. Yeah, so just put it in a glass to... and then just hold it in between your. Yeah, that's actually, actually, you know, I think I no, that's floating. That's not hovering. That's floating. Yeah, but that would have you been. A, I, that's. I would have got to the point where I've gone. I don't know how to do this properly, so I'm going to do it in a really annoying way, and then argue in the studio with Greg for ages. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you. I don't think you would have got zero. I think someone was bound to make that balloon fly away. Like yeah. I think that was just inevitable. Like someone, I didn't expect two. I thought only one person would make it fly away, but um, yeah, it was, it was definitely an inevitable. I think that's the thing you forget sometimes when you're doing them is as long as you complete the task, you probably won't come bottom because there'll be yeah. someone who fucks it so badly that they get a zero. Yeah, you're playing the laws of average. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Sarah went with the static. What? <laughs> the edit was quite cruel to Sarah here because everyone basically realised the static thing straight away, apart from mm. apart from Mike, um, and then. Uh, but they showed Sarah's edit. She was doing stuff for like half an hour before she went, oh, static electricity. It just made her seem so slow. <laughs> yeah, 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 lad. yeah. I mean, because the thing is, it's just in that moment, though, man, you just don't, like, it's just the pressure of being filmed and having to do it and the time yeah. constraint. And you really do just forget basic logic. 
it made me have more of respect for Bear Grylls <laughs> that he can think under that much pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Though? Like, if I like to think that if I was stuck in the wilderness, I'd be like, yeah, man, you know, I'd sit down and think, but I'll just panic. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? If I can't handle, if I can't handle like, thinking about static, how am I going to handle <laughs> like, you know, having to hunt and kill prey? Yeah. But I'd be interested to see if Bear Grylls could do what he does if Alex Horn was following him around with an iPad. Do you know, I think he would crumble. Yeah. Personally. I don't think he could handle that. <laughs> Half yeah. the tasks I did, I ended up within 10 minutes in the shed just going, oh God, <laughs> yeah. what am I going to get? Yeah. And that's why I love that shed as well. Because you just, for some reason, you always think there's something in the shed that's going to help. And there's like <laughs> so definitely. much shit in that shed that is just pointless. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's just unhelpful stuff. But then sometimes you find that one thing in the shed, and you just go, "This is, this is, this is, this is it. This is, this is the saving grace." But you're right. You know, I, in the back of my mind, as a production, they they go, "We're going to put the perfect thing to solve the task mm. in the shed." But they're not doing that. They're just they're they're letting no. you do whatever you want. But in oh, my mind, it's like there's got to be an answer. Yeah, there's a bunch of nothingness in that shed. Like it's yeah. literally like nothingness. Like I just thought there was, there was one time I looked in that shed. And it was literally just a pedal off a bike, <laughs> just, <laughs> just one pedal <laughs> off a bike. And you just go, what this is? And it was, there was no other bike. There was no broken bike. It was just a yeah. pedal off a bike. Like it's just, <laughs> it's just pointless shit. And quite often there's just stuff left over from other series and yeah. other, yeah. Like the, you'll see, you'll recognize, I'll recognize something from a task, you know, in series seven or something. It's like, well, that, it looks like that would be helpful, but I know just no one's cleared that up yet. Yeah, it literally, that shed isn't really even made. It's just people, comedians just started going in there and trying to help themselves. It's just a storage yeah. cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> it's not actually made to help anyone. It's just a storage cupboard. Um, we've got to talk about Mike because this is quite an incredible effort. Um, so he loses the balloon. We think he's, we think he's done for. <clears throat> and then still he sees the balloon mm. over the fence and he ran over the fence and went and got the balloon. That was true, true dedication from Mike Wozniak. Would you would you have done that, Jamali? Yeah, I would have done that. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't think I would have looked for it though. You know what I'm saying though? Like the fact that he saw it, like I would have just once that balloon's gone, I'd be like, all right, well, task done, and gone inside. I like to thought, even though my initial things, I would like to have said, I would have gone and I would. I once that once that balloon's out of my hands in the air, I think I would have gave up pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> like genuinely, I, I thought I second thought it. I was like, yeah, I'll probably just be like, well, all right, well, you can't win them all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it was naught points for Lee and Charlotte uh, because they lost the balloon. Uh, three points for Sarah Kendall, uh, four points for Mike Wozniak, and five points for you, Jamali. Put your balloon back. One sneery, sneery, two sneery, sneery. One sneery, sneery, five sneery. Sneery, sneery, nine. Sneery, sneery. Twenty sneery, sneery. Well, thank you. I'm very happy I got your balloon back, Alex. When you uh, lose, uh, lose that, in right. case you need it. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Task two. Have an argument. You must take it in turns to angrily make a point using no more than ten words, and you must always end your point with a different four-letter word. You must look at each other during the argument, and the person speaking must angrily wag their finger during the, their speech. The argument is over when there's 10 seconds of silence or when one of you looks away. Longest argument wins. Your argument must start three minutes from now. I mean, that's got to be up there with the, one of the longest task descriptions ever, I think. Yeah, and there's so much information you've got to remember. But then also, funnily enough, uh, just some about when that task, because you're just standing on that podium, right? And we was there for, I was standing on that podium by myself for ages. And yeah. I thought that was part of the task. Yeah, I know. So I'm sort of like arguing with Alex and then I see Sarah come. And so me and Sarah thought that when Alex was like, well, I'll explain the task in a bit and I'll explain the task in a bit. So then we started trying to solve the task. Yeah. <laughs> That's how paranoid it makes you. It really was. I was so paranoid. So I was like explaining. So then when that happened, I, I think I have only one shoe on doing that task. <laughs> yeah, you arguing. do. Yeah, because you tried to take your laces out <laughs> yeah. to try and get the task. What I loved about that, Jamali, so this is the first team task of the of yeah, the yeah, series. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is this probably proves that you hadn't really watched it before because when I was in a team, I was in a team of three, yeah. um, I was one of the people walking in and, uh, and Katie Wicks was there. And then we said, can we open the task? And Alex said, no, you've got to wait. And then I, I immediately clicked, there's someone else coming, it's a team of three. Okay, yeah. 
Right. So with you, you're waiting for ages. Sarah arrives. And both of you at no point thought there must be someone else coming. You thought the Absolutely task not. was to get the task from another podium. And you yeah. never had the thought of Charlotte arriving. No, no. It never crossed my mind. <laughs> never. Didn't even, didn't even think about it. That it was, there was not even a possibility that it wasn't for me to take my shoes off, tie the laces together to make some type of garrot. <laughs> and swing it over and get the task that way. Absolutely no, no, no. Love no. it. It was mad. Uh, yeah. So what? When when you were thinking about that, you thought I've got to get the task with my laces. That that's the only option. That must be what they want me to do. Mm-hmm. Did did you have any uh, thing in mind as to what the task might be at that point? What do you think was in the envelope if if you had to get it with your laces? Probably get off the podium as quick as possible, or something, yeah. something else, <laughs> or switch podiums, or say say your name. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a in a in an accent, it's just, it's something stupid. Like I just I just I, I honestly don't even know, man. Like it, it, you know. But yes, first team task. Did you did you know either of uh, Sarah or Charlotte before going? I n- in? Never <clears throat> met Charlotte, and I've never met Charlotte. But I know of like I I had um, no, I never met her. Yeah, and and I I know Sarah. I actually did a, a week in Amsterdam with Sarah for Tumla. Oh, cool. Because yeah, I did the summer festival with her. So I had worked with Sarah before and it's like, so I did a week with her in Amsterdam and then I'd never, and I had never seen, I hadn't seen her since then. And that was maybe like a year and a half ago. But uh, yeah, so I know Sarah, Sarah, and I mean Sarah cool, you know what I'm saying? Back home. Yeah, that's the thing about being a comic. If you have to do something like a week with someone or a festival, you basically, yeah. it's like you've known them at work for 20 years because you have to make friends with them really quickly. Yeah. And you, and you end up with friends with people that, cause I mean, she, you know, she's a, she's a, she's a mum of two, you know, Australian yeah. lady. And I was a, you know, I was a 25, you know, 27 year old like, <laughs> comedian from London. And then you just yeah. end up being like really good mates. And it's just really weird. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause we're in normal life with people that would never hang out with each other probably. But you know, when you sort of do a, when you do a gig with someone abroad, you kind of just become these sort of like, you know, holiday friends. Yeah. And that's good. I guess that, that does help if you, if you're in a team with someone on something like this, I mean, it didn't necessarily, didn't necessarily help here. You guys didn't win this one. Um, No, I I think it was unfair because there was only two in the other one. So I I think think it makes it easier for you. Nah, I think they can bounce back a conversation way easier than us, you know, because it's just, because then it's just two people, so it's like, yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think it was because then I've got to uh, carry on a conversation from a two other people where it's easier for two people to sort of bounce back and forth. So I think it was a. I think I'm going to call about. you on that one, Jamali. I think you've got uh, way longer to think of stuff. If I mean, and um, um, and yeah, okay. look, your first contribution to the conversation made me laugh so much. You just got straight in there and used the word fuck, even though it didn't really <laughs> yeah. make sense. Yeah. <laughs> you're like i'm claiming that straight away i'm taking yeah because i knew someone else was going to take it yeah. i don't mind losing the task i just didn't want to be the person that lost the task for them yeah you know what i mean so I was just, charlotte was fuck. never gonna charlotte was yeah. never gonna use that she, she the first yeah, thing she true. did was work out how many letters hand had she was never gonna <laughs> yeah. She, her I'm yeah i'm just really bad with the letter like the number of letters in a word because i'm much, right cause yeah. I've, I've, I've actually got mad dyslexia in that so i can't spell Right, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I can't spoil That's why I've never done uh, uh, eight does, eight out of ten does countdown. Because like, yeah. it will literally be every round of me just saying... Four letters, my, fuck. Yeah, my, my word is and. <laughs> and cat. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, uh, yeah, so I can't spell. So I really struggled. Like, this one was the one that kind of gave me the most, like, I really don't think I'm going to be able to do this. It's but you did, I, like you say, you, did, you said in the studio as well, at no point in the task does it say that the conversation has to make sense. Yeah. So you just concentrated on getting the four letter words out there, even though it didn't really create yeah. a, a, a conversation, a coherent conversation. Yeah, 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 definitely. Cause I think that's it. You just kind of, yeah. And as well as like, that's what I like to do sometimes, especially with like those tasks is what I learned is, is just read it very literal. Yeah. And, and cause then you can always debate your point of like, well, you didn't say it had to make a yeah. full coherent conversation. You know, if you ever been to any bus stop at 10 o'clock at night, you know what I'm saying? You will hear these conversations. <laughs> So it is you technically it. a conversation. I really like that you use the word town, and then when Alex challenged you on it, you said it's slang that he doesn't understand. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I've done that. I've done that a few times. It's a technique I use mostly on uh, uh, like sort of middle classy people. Like I, 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 I do it to my agent sometimes. I love it. Yeah, just make people feel uncomfortable for not knowing it. That's perfect. 
Um, Absolutely, man. Mike and Lee uh, managed to argue for five minutes, 30, 35 seconds, uh, and it ended with... Yeah, valiant effort. It was a really good effort, um, but I would challenge that they were having an argument because at the end they were like, the, the characters within the argument were showing each other their genitals and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. It didn't. It turned yeah. into a bit of a love-in, to be honest. Uh, I, I, and also, Lee started used the word "use," and it didn't it didn't quite make sense for me. I think there was some you could have picked them up on a couple of bits, but other than that, I think they did deserve sure. the points. It, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all, 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 um, all jokes aside, they, they I think they definitely they they won that task very clearly, and it was you know and they did hard on clearly. yeah and they did win yeah. Well, th- you know, it was it was harder for them. I'm going to say it, but that I thought that until you you got that sub story about dyslexia and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> until, you, until you start doing them hearts, put on yeah. them heart strings. Yeah, you go. Get you off, man. This, is, this is war, man. You've got to use any technique you can. <laughs> right above your teeth, it's too bare. Below my belt is also. Below your belt should look like a bear. It's what I mean. You're talking tosh. I'll show you my cock. <laughs> I would love to see you wang. Um, task three, make the house haunted. Most haunted house wins. You have an hour. Your time starts now. Now, this is the sort of task that I loved. I love stuff like mm-hmm. this. I love anything where you have an hour. You can go to the dressing yeah. room, have a little think, and ask them. Yeah, the to famous chickpea one. Yes, the amazing chickpea one, which was the great. The chickpea one. Thank you, man. Yeah, so that's the sort of thing that that style of task where you have a bit of time to mm-hmm. think about it. Um, now you did. Re- you asked me to remind you before we recorded this what <laughs> what you did, and yeah. I don't know how you could possibly forget what you did. Yeah, because I thought forgot. I honestly thought it was genius. I thought it was mm. a really fun idea. I think it was like something from a haunted house, uh, a haunted house in like nineteen thirties Disney or something, or yeah. you know, in a in a really early horror film. Mm-hmm. Your one problem was that you used string when you could have asked them to get you fishing wire or something. You could have asked to get something translucent, and that might have worked better. I forgot the wording of... So in my head, I was thinking fishing wire. Oh, right. Is this just, a dyslexic thing again? No, no, it's not a dyslexic. It's just me. <laughs> this, this is me being silly. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is actually me being stupid. But I forgot uh, fishing wire. And, you know, when I said string, I didn't think they were going to get me yarn string. I thought they were going to get me, like, <laughs> thin string. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I should have been Pacific or thin string. They never, you know, they never said what... It was just, you know, so I'm, I messed up on the string. Yeah, but, um, big, str- big string, I think you kept saying. Yeah, okay, yeah, but I meant big as in long, not big as in thick. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying, though? Like, I didn't mean it as in girth, I meant it as in length. But you it was a saying? very funny, it's a very conversation, a uh, very funny conversation. And these, uh, those are the things that tend to live on in the minds of people with Taskmaster. So if yeah. you'd used fishing wire and done it that way, it might have looked fine on the night, looked quite yeah. impressive. But people aren't going to remember that. What they, re- what they will remember is your explanation <laughs> of the scariest thing being if all the shops sold out of strength. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 man yeah it was, i enjoyed i enjoyed that i did enjoy that sort of back when i enjoyed it and I, and I was really i thought it was, i thought it came out looking funny you know what i'm saying it I did it came of, out looking really I think, funny I, I think something i think you know because like you said you know something looking great and amazing it can be cool too but then somebody's yeah. looking absolute dog shit and this is like <laughs> you could just blatantly see the string being pulled because i think that's the you know i think it's like especially like you know when it, cause when you watch films yeah. And you can blatantly see the string. Like, yeah, I think I find that more entertaining than when it's done perfectly. Definitely. You know what I'm so no, I completely I, yeah, agree. I that one, man. And I and I know for a fact that they would have really enjoyed doing that one as a team as well. As soon as you yeah. came up with that one, I bet like the Andes especially would have been really excited to do yeah, that because you can tell they've labelled all the strings and stuff, and they've got yeah, really yeah. into how it looks. It's it's really fun. Because, because I wanted to change it, and they were like, "No, trust me, this is yeah. funny." And I went, all right, cool, you know, because they're like, they're like, you know, go with your initial idea. Because I told them that idea initially, and they were like, that's funny yeah. as hell. And I was kind of like, okay, all right. And then they, then they came out and they said they will look good on the edit, and it did, it did look funny on the edit. So yeah, to, it was I great. Them, I have to give them props for that, you know. Um, Charlotte's uh, effort. She had the mannequin in the chair that everyone <laughs> thought was her, and she was controlling objects from underneath the table. Yeah. Um, the only issue with hers was at the end. For some reason, she decided to reveal herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For no, for no reason. Like yeah. that was that. Like it was that, that was the scary part of the reveal. Was like yeah. actually, it wasn't me the whole time. <laughs> like really? Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. that's not what you want from a from a horror film, as Greg says. I think you don't want to you don't want to see how it's done. 
yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. at the end, particularly. Unless you can see how it's done from the beginning anyway, because there's big, thick ropes connecting everything. Yeah, to the giant caravan. string. This big string. <laughs> big string. Yeah. Um, although, yeah, no, it was good. And the mannequin did, it fooled me a bit as well. Mm. Um, Sarah recreated The Shining. Um, mm. Using Alex as the little kid uh, and uh, herself as the twins, which was I quite. Think t- it, I think that was quite. I think that was quite. That's quite. That was quite a horrifying image. The first time I saw it was Alex. Yeah, pretending to be a little kid. I don't know why. There was something about yeah. uh, an old-looking man <laughs> on a little bicycle. But, yeah, look, it's quite. It's quite. I don't know. It is quite scary. <laughs> it is scary. I think, but I think with her as the twins, I think it proves that kids are scarier than adults because. Obviously, yeah. The Shining is scarier than that. But she did a good, she did a really good job. Look, she had an idea, she stuck to it. I thought that she pulled it off really well. Yeah, yeah she was really fun. Um, Lee told the story of the haunted caravan um, <laughs> <laughs> using the Ouija board, and I like the little twist in Lee's. Uh, yeah. So he said, oh, "Oh no, it's not real. Sorry, we're not, we're not really doing it. I'm doing all of this," which explained within the story why it looked quite bad. And then, and then the ghost came out, and that, and that was the twist. I thought. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was I thought it was good, but my one point, and I would have argued this in the studio, he hadn't haunted the house, he haunted the caravan. That's oh, not that, what the task yeah, was. That is a very good angle. I didn't even think of that angle. That is a very good angle. I think when they say the house, I think they yeah. include the caravan in that. I think that's where you would have I don't think you would have won that argument, but I would I would have, have torn uh, into it, man. I, I would have won preferred... it, but yeah. Oh, I would have I would have yeah, I would have enjoyed seeing it and I would have yeah. said, you know what? <laughs> He's got a good point. It's sort of when people say, you know, it's when people say Tupac is the best alive. And I go, I get why you say that. Right. It's not right. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? No, like I get it. Yeah. And I think you will debate me to the end and you would even nearly convince me about it. But it's yeah. not true. And I think that's kind of where you would have gone with that argument. That would have been, that's a very good point though. Even though I don't agree with you, it's a very good point. It's the sort, I mean, uh, last week uh, we had Richard Herring on the podcast and he made the point that you tried to drop Charlotte in it for the rat catching task by saying she she wasn't three metres away from the rat when she caught it, even yeah. though you weren't three metres away from the well, rat. Well, technically I was, because no. technically there was no evidence to say I was. Because <laughs> they blurred out your hands. Because they blurred out my hands. And, that, you know, if we're talking about, listen, there's, there's, there's an old saying uh, that I like to live by, no face, no case. If you don't actually catch me doing the crime, then it doesn't, yeah. I, I think it doesn't hold up in court. You could, listen, we all know OJ did it, but it didn't fit. So you must have right. quit. You know what I'm saying? Like we've got to talk about, there has to be some law in it. And technically I could see Charlotte wasn't that far away, but you didn't see my hands. Right. Okay. So that you're comparing, you're comparing <laughs> your rat catching task to the OJ case. And <laughs> Basically, saying... I compare everything in my life to the OJ trial. Okay? <laughs> well, you know that about me. If there's one thing, if there's one thing I want to be known for when I die is that he compared his life to the OJ trial. <laughs> <laughs> Every element of his life was comparable to the OJ trial. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely would have argued. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I might, I might have lost that because also mm. I'd imagine there was a point where Lee came up with a caravan idea that they said that he said, "Oh, it's not the house. I can't do it." And they probably pushed him towards the caravan because it's it's a different location. It, yeah, it just yeah. varies this, it up a bit. Yes, for for, for I, you know, I honestly I think that. Um, it probably was a production, maybe, cause, and plus it kind of visually. But then, if we're looking mm. on it, I think as well. I think picking a caravan. So if we're if we're not guys, you know, debating the idea, but just in terms of visual, I think yeah. the caravan for a horror looks better than the house because that's not a scary house. Yeah. you know no. what I'm saying. But the caravan is quite. There's something quite eerie about that. I think caravans in general that aren't like really nice. You know, the ones that yeah. are like you know really really nice ones, like the ones that cost too much money for a caravan. Yeah, they are. There's kind of, there's something quite weird about them. Something quite seventies and weird about it. Like, yeah, so definitely. And it, he picked a good choice. Normally, like, yeah, in horror films, if someone lives in a caravan, they're they're not they're a bad egg, right? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, finally, yeah. Mike. Uh, he literally created a haunted house. The whole house was a haunted entity in itself uh, yeah. that beckoned Alex in. Uh, and then uh, chewed him up and spat out, spat out his remains. A really, like you say, like you say about Mike, he's got a unique brain, and I think this was a, a good example of that. Yeah, I think it was good editing, though. I think a lot of it was down to the editing. Interesting. So I've written this down as well. Right. That was my yeah. one issue with Mike. It, 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 it was a lot of Mike. fix, right? Yeah. yeah. So what you've got to think about what Mike actually had to do on the day. It's very little. Uh, yes. So he would have said, I've had this idea. And, you know, Mike's great. Mike's directed short films before. I'm mm. sure he was very clear with what he wanted. I'm sure he asked for all of it. But he yeah. didn't do a lot of it. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. A very I good agree. idea. 
Yeah. Um, and I think you you always know you're onto a bit of a winner back in the studio when Greg says, "Let's drill down into the narrative." Greg loves <laughs> drilling down into the narrative. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was, and it, it looked great. Like I think it looked like one of the better ones, but visually. But I think it's like, I think it kind of isn't what the top. I think if anyone broke the rules, I think that was breaking the rules the most. It was maybe against the spirit of what they'd hoped for, but it came yes, out okay. looking great. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. also, like I prefer horror films with with proper practical effects. You know, I'd rather yeah, watch yeah. you. I'd rather watch yours. Yours is very much. You know, a sort of Night of the Living Dead versus I'm a, I'm a purist. versus Mike's Avatar. Yeah, you're a <laughs> yeah, purist. Yeah. I'm exactly. a purist. I'm a different purist. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agreed with Greg that no one should have got low points. I think everyone everyone did do a good job. I would mm. perhaps argue that you should not have got the same amount of points as Charlotte. I think Charlotte should have maybe had two points for hers if we're yeah. comparing it to yours. Okay. Um, yours was three points, uh, and then Lee and Mike got joint. Uh, joint four points. I think yeah. you should have been bumped up in all honesty, Jamali. I think you should have had another point for yours. Oh, really? Uh, I would have given the other two five and then gave yeah. me three and then gave... I, you know, I would have gave Charlotte three too. I think Charlotte one was... It's just the end reveal maybe, but I the think... The end fucked um, it a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think... I think uh, I, I wouldn't have been mad at uh, Char, me and Charlotte both getting three and then giving them to the, the, the four or five or, you know... And, and Sarah five as well. Comparing Sarah's and Mike's, I know, yeah, Mike's the editing and all of that. But I think Mike had a truly original idea, whereas Sarah was parodying a film already. So mm. I don't know whether they, they should have made, Mike should have been bumped up potentially. But yeah. you know, I, thought they, I thought they were all pretty good. I think it's a rare example of no one fumbled it, really. No, no, and they were, they were, yeah, they were all fun in their own way, I guess. Yeah, I agree with you. So there were lots of classic spooky phrases in there. White Sheet was requested for the classic Ghost by Lee, Corpse, and then, of course... Out on the biggest, the spookiest request of them all. <laughs> Some big, scary strip. <laughs> yeah. So big. Yeah, yeah. My thing was to buy out all the string, because there's nothing more scary than when you need string and there ain't none. <laughs> Like, oh, I'm Greg Davis, I need some string. Oh, like, yeah. Jamali's bought it all. All your thoughts start with, I'm Greg Davis, and then you have the thought <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Studio task. Correctly guess you're standing in the group. The taskmaster will read out a category, and then you must hold a number that reflects your standing. Most correct answers wins. Now, I like this because usually the studio tasks are quite fraught and tense. Yeah. Because you've got to do something or get something right, and everyone's looking at you. Yeah. But this is quite. this was quite a chill studio task, I thought. Yeah, but do you know what? It was chilled, but it was more physically chilled, but more psychological because they yeah. they just came up to me when I was in the getting ready, like in the dressing room. They were just coming up to yeah. me and saying, how many eggs can you hold? And you go, why do you want to know? <laughs> Don't worry. And it was just bare, like, I just, it just annoyed me until we found out what it was. Do you know so what I'm with saying? the eggs, like, with the eggs, yeah. did they make you do it to prove yeah, it? Yeah, they made, it, they, made us, they made us hold the eggs. Some of them were just questions. Like, how yeah. much milk do you drink? Hey, Jamali, actually, um, and they'll ask you just bare, like, they'll just knock on your door and say, hey, what do you want to eat later? And you go, oh, I want this. And they go, how much, how much drink your milk? How much milk do you think you drink, Jamali? And you go, why? And she goes, I'm just asking. And you go, well, I don't know. And it's just bare, like, it was just bare jargon. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so that part kind of messed me up a little bit. But, um, yeah, it was in terms of actually physicality, it was quite chill, especially from the last episode where we're throwing buckets at each other. So. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the most tragic thing about this task, I thought, is you guessed that you had the second most amount of phone contacts, uh, but in reality, you had by far the lowest amount of phone contacts. Yeah, hundred percent. Do you know? I think it's such a weird question because I don't. Know. I think I have more than that. How much did I say again? It's well, they said you had one hundred and fifty phone contacts, which yeah. is like I think half of the next person's. Yeah, I, I think honestly, I think it's kind of. You remember earlier when I said how many panel shows you've done, and you just went a oh, hundred. A hundred. Like, yeah. I, 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 I just, <laughs> you just kind of don't. Um, you don't know the number, so you just kind of sound the number that sounds legit. Like 150 contacts sounds like what I would have. I, I think I have more. Like I, I generally just could not know. You must have more than that. I think so. You're, I think I you're do, a popular yeah. guy, Jamali. Come on, you've got more oh, than thank 150. You. Like a, I mean, I don't. I don't have a gambles number, but you know, that's another. That's another. That's true. Number that's day. true. Actually, you don't have mine. So yeah, you know. Yeah. I'll, I'm happy to send happy to send it to you, and then you can bump it up to 150. I'm about to say, so I'm about to say, if I don't have a gambler's number, do I actually have any numbers worth having? <laughs> throw, <laughs> throw your phone in the sea. You, you might as well. You might throw it away. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, it's uh, it is um, uh, yeah. So I, I, I probably do have more than 150. So I it was that's why I like I sort of said that number, and I gauged yeah. that I thought I would have the second amount of most numbers. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I no, thought yes, Charlotte would have the most numbers. Yeah, I was surprised that Lee did. 
Um, yeah. I don't know why, just because Lee's like the Greg makes out that Lee's the old the old man in the series, so I assume yeah. he didn't even have a phone. Yeah, yeah, no, real talk. Yeah, he's, and he like he's text me. You know, like when, the, when the old people have their text, but the writing's real big. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like it's like the right. It's like a whole like you know what I mean. It's like a size fucking twenty. Yeah. Um, the most frequent washing of towels made me feel like absolute scum, to be honest. Because yeah. Charlotte washes hers like once every three days. I think I'm once a month, like Mike. Once a month, really? Yeah, that's common. Once a month. I don't know. I did. I I thought that was normal, but you apparently know, not. Ha- I have a lot of towels though. Yeah, you, know you showed so off about I- your towels on the show as well. You really. Yeah, I- I have a lot of towels, so I just sort of like use them, put them in the wash basket, use them, put them in. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just have like, you know, I'll have like, I've got, I think I've got, you know, 15 towels. So I, but how you know, are you drying your, how are you drying your towels, Jamali? Because towels take ages to dry, don't they? Ironically. Um, yeah, I've got you a have washing a, machine. You, you, got, you just use a tumble dryer, right? Yeah, I've got a washing dryer, yeah. Oh, yeah, so do we, but the, the dryer is quite poor. So we'd have to dry the dry the towels on the rack, and then that takes you know two days. And it does. In winter. Yeah. Towels do. Towels do for something that needs to be wet for its purpose. It does take a lot yeah. of time to dry. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Though something that needs to be wet for its purpose of it needs to be wet. Yeah, no, that's a that's a, that's a very that's a very interesting point. And I think we, me and you have just had a business idea of quick dry towels. Yeah. But I think quick we dry towels before someone else. Did it. And I think me and you are going to make a million pounds. But no, I uh, also yeah, that's no. the sort of thing I would do a stand up, and you absolutely. Absolutely would not. <laughs> do you know what? I think we should both do the angle and see yeah. what each of us come see up with. Comes I mean, out. Mine yeah. will obviously become racial. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, mine would be about like you know, it would be obviously turned into some racial debate. It's like because you know, I think the white people are uh, holding yeah. towels. White people are keeping all the good towels. <laughs> yeah, that's the real conspiracy. We talk about slavery, but we should talk about the the towels. Yeah, um, Mike was a once a month man with the towels as well, which then made me feel sick because he'd already admitted to drinking 37 pints of milk a month. So I just which imagine he like sweats milk out of his body. So he's got stinky milk towels. <laughs> that's 37 pints of milk a month. Yeah, I think that's, that's horrible. That's very excessive. Are you, are you vegan? I'm not vegan, but I, oh. I was vegan for a bit, weirdly. I was yes, vegan for yes, like yes, yes. eight or nine months. And yeah, I think I remember that time. That's why I said you. I'm yeah. Vegan. Yeah, yeah. And in yeah. that time, I stopped drinking milk, obviously. And now I've never yeah. gone back to it. So now I, I will yeah. have almond milk, really. I, do, I just don't have, don't have cow's yeah, milk. Cause what, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the same way now as well. Um, and it's, you, you know, I think, yeah, that's a lot of milk, man. Yeah. How much did you say? It's all 37 gallons. 37 pints, 37 gallons, oh, 37 oh, yeah, pints. pints a month. <clears throat> it's a lot. Was that, it's a huge amount. T- yeah, man. Because how many sort of pint of milk in your tea? So if he's even just having, but then he's not drinking like he's not drinking twelve cups of tea a day. No, that's too much milk. No, but he said he has yeah. it in tea and coffee and on cereal, and then he just drinks glasses of milk like a Which twelve year old boy. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, so yeah. weird. But the twelve year old boy in the nineteen forties, where you yeah. think that like <laughs> that's what's going to make you grow strong. Yeah, <laughs> like... because of a government advert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for real. Yeah, no, that that's an insane amount of milk. Um, Lee won that studio task uh, because he knows himself, which is, I guess, is something that comes with age as well. 100%. You know, you know yourself, and you know where where you are in groups of people, um, yeah. which all means that Mike actually won the uh, episode with twenty one yeah. points, um, quite far ahead of everyone else. Uh, it was Sarah Kendall second, then Lee Mack, uh, and then your good self, and then Charlotte Ritchie below you. Uh, so series points. Mike is in the lead there, but you know it's it's only second episode, so it's all pretty close. It's it's all to yeah. play for. It's all very it's close. All to play for. Yeah, but it's um yeah, I think I think it you know honestly like I I in like the ones that the things that gave Mike the points to win that episode, I'm not even that mad at to be honest with you. Yeah, I no, but, yeah, fair. I think I'm yeah the fair. the film thing is debatable, but I think you can't yeah. deny the quality of it. It's yeah. just the way yeah. he got to it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We've got a few emails uh, from listeners. Um, Hi, Ed. LJ here. Big Taskmaster fan from Surabaya, Indonesia. Surabaya. Wow. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. We've got uh, Indonesia, love the... man. I love Indonesia. Man. Yeah. That's a, that's a great country, so. Love the show uh, and have watched possibly all Taskmaster content on YouTube. Question for Jamali. Does Greg really make you as angry as it seems, or are you just trying to get under his skin? Thanks, and keep up the good work on the podcast. <laughs> Good question. Big up Indonesia. And I would say I'm just trying to get under his skin, really. 
Like, yeah. I really like going, do you know what? Greg does remind me of a lot of my teachers where they like me and because yeah. they see I have potential, they give me a hard time. Does yeah. that make sense? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, totally. I, see, I definitely have that. I, f- I definitely felt that with Greg where Greg's like, you know, it, it, he sees potential. So he's kind of gives me a tougher time because it's like, you yes. can do better than that. You know what I'm saying? But I think he definitely. does deep down believe in me. Totally. I, like I completely agree. And also I would say what they're very good at in the edit of the studio stuff as well. Um, yeah. with you especially is they leave in all your stuff of you being antagonistic but then they also leave in you laughing as well so it's clear it's not oh, you're yeah, not actually yeah, angry yeah. at greg it's all no, it's all good no, fun no, no. yeah it's all good but you, you, that you first episode that first episode he was definitely taken aback by how you came out of the traps all guns blazing <laughs> he was definitely like all right we've got we've got a live one here i'm gonna we've have got, to, get, I'm gonna to stay on my toes <laughs> yeah 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 we've got a wild buck here yeah 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 <laughs> Um, hi Jamali what else can you spin on your finger and how did you learn to do it I started with this is from Dave in Miami in Florida by the way Um, (laughs) I started with a frisbee and worked my way up to laptops and iPads and then also books and cushions but I can't spin a basketball also you got totally screwed by Greg that should have been five points so yeah question from Dave in Florida what else can you spin on your finger Honestly, just pillows and I (laughs) I cannot spin a basketball I think I can do pizza dough Yes, I think that would I think that would translate, but I can't do basketballs. And how I learned was is I used to do it to my mum's pillows. Like yeah. I think I was like I think do you know what if I really think back to it because I've been doing it for years. Like it's kind of like well, a party trick. Of all the things you could have been doing to your mum's pillows, I think that's probably <laughs> the best. <one. laughs> that's very funny because um, I used to do that as well. But I um, <laughs> that's uh, that's how I found my love for pillows. But what I would do is could is, you spin um, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I do is I would, <laughs> what I would do is is I would actually um, burn holes in it with uh, the what? friction. Yes, yeah, so my mum's all my mum's pillows growing up would have holes in them because where I'd be spinning them, and I'd sit on the sofa <laughs> and spin them for hours, and it would create friction and actually make little burn holes. And my mum used to get fucking livid with me. My mum would be like, "Stop fucking spinning these pillows!" And I would do it for hours. Um, and then I remember one time we went. My mum, my mum said to me. Uh, she goes like, why do you, you spend so much time spinning pillows? Like, it's not a job. Like, there's no career in spinning pillows. And so I rang my mum that night and I said to her, you said there was no career in spinning pillows. And now look at your boy. <laughs> spinning pillows on national TV. I hope you, know you use some of, your, some of your fee from Taskmaster to buy us some new pillows. Yeah, I should actually, innit? I mean, I spent yeah. all, all the Taskmaster money already on uh, my own pillows for spinning. And then <laughs> But um, no, uh, yeah. So I've been I've been doing it since I was like maybe like, I don't know, man. I've been doing it since I was like ten. And, That's um, great. But I can't do any other. Um, I can't spin nothing else. I can't spin a laptop. I think a laptop um, is is too much. There's not enough weight distribution for me, so I don't know how. And also, that. you don't want you need to be pretty sure you can spin it properly, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit heavy, but I can do yeah. pillows. I can pr- yeah. So I've been doing it. I've been doing it for years, and I, f- I don't. I think it was me pretending I was spinning a basketball when I was like imagining in my head. And then it yeah. just came out as pillows. And I didn't realise no one else couldn't do it until other people saw me doing it and then tried to do it. And they go like, how do you do it? And I didn't realise it wasn't easy for everyone to do it. That's great. I love that. Yeah. It's That's a really a, weird co- skill. It's just a really strange skill. Yeah. Really. Like, <laughs> but comedy's one of the comedy's one of I think one of the only careers where you can pick up weird skills like that and eventually you might get a chance to use them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, isn't it? Like it's definitely a, a good part. And I think that was one thing, like, when I did that Taskmaster task, I was happy. I was like, oh, I can spin a pillow. Like, it was my first thing. I was like, yeah. oh, I can spin. I can get this out of the way. Spin a pillow <laughs> on my finger. Um, this is from Darren. Hi, could you take Greg? Your attitude to him suggests you believe you can, but could ooh, you? Oh, in like a scrap? Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I'll be honest with you. I think I, I, think, I, think, he, I think it would be a good scrap. Um, yeah, I think the age thing might weigh in my favor. He's got he's got a lot of height and weight on me. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't. I would. I would probably my technique. I would probably go for the kneecaps. <laughs> I bet, he looks like one of them big guys with bad knees. Yeah, so I'd, I'd go for the kneecap. Uh, I don't think I, I don't. I don't think I want to get into a grappling match with him. No, I think, I think, I think he, if, he's overbearing. If, yeah, yeah. If he gets on top of you, that's the end, right? That's it. Do you know what I'm saying? If he gets on top, of you, he could just hold you down and be like, relax. You know, them yeah. ones there. We just relax. Like, you know, as I, as I worm out of it. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think, I think I'd i like to say I could, but I don't know. He'd give me a good one. I think it'll be a tasty scrap. You know what I mean? I think you'd have to, you'd have to deal with him quickly because if yes. he gets one, if he gets one in, 
Yeah, done. yeah, yeah. That's it. You got to, you, it's one of them brothers where you can't mess around. You got to do that. You got to fight dirty with him. You got to be like, yeah. I don't want the bang. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't go in there, like, you know, you can't go in there and be like, all right, let's do it fair. You know what I'm saying? But I think, you know, kneecaps would be my technique. Kneecaps, yeah. And kneecaps yeah. are about head height as well. So you could just. Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. You could share. That's it, man. Just share. <laughs> you could just say, yeah. Here we're a good elbow strike. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is from Olivia. Uh, Dear Jamali, did you regret the bum bag papoose on the plates task? No, I think I had a good idea. I just didn't execute it well. Yeah, I'd say so. Like, I think I the think, idea yeah. was solid. I just didn't tie it tight enough. And, you know, I think it just, you know, I think I messed up on that. And I think I picked the best mode of transport as well. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, all the ideas were right. But yeah, it was so frustrating to watch those plates just spilling out. Because at some point, you must have realised they were spilling out and just decided to just let them go, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just gave up on that point, mate. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, well, they're gone. But um, I think the bike probably would have been... I think my... Do you know, actually, I think if I would have done the bike and then wrapped them around the handlebar, I think it would have yeah. worked a lot better. But, you know, in the moment. In the moment, it's gone I don't now. regret it, though, yep. This is from Connor in Plymouth. This is our final email. Uh, Dear Ed and Jamali, what was Jamali's favourite task? If it's a spoiler, can he tease us with three words to sum it up? Many thanks, Connor. Um, uh, I mean, your favourite task might have been in, the, in, in one of the first two episodes, but if you've got one coming up that you really enjoyed, do you have any, any words that yeah. could sum it up without spoiling it? I think it was the first one we filmed, mm. and it's actually not out yet, but I'll, sp- I'll give you a little... Um, I'll give you a little clue, and it's hiss. Okay, hiss. And that's the clue, hiss. Hiss, hot, knives. We always, we always ask uh, our guests to rate their experience on the podcast uh, between one and five points. Uh, we've got a little table going, so would, would, what would you give this podcast? I'll give this a solid four points, man. I'm happy with that. Solid four points, uh, and the only and the only way, and it's my fault why it's not a five is just because it's uh, it's just audio. I can't see you because of yeah, my, that's the problem. We, my, we my had my crappy some laptop, and also issues the, with the and, setup. Yeah, and it may, and it's my fault. So I, I'm giving my performance a four. I don't think I've been on the point, and it's just because it's like when I can't see you, I feel like I'm speaking over you sometimes. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, and yeah, kind of you've not issue. been at all. You've been great. Not it's great. been great. If, so much. if anything, I think you know we've not been able to see each other. But I would give it five points because I've had such a lovely time catching up. So well done. I, I'm going to give you a bonus point, Jamali. Thank you so much, man. It was lovely being here. Thank you. Thanks very much for coming on. Peace. Uh, I'm loving this series so much. Uh, I think Jamali's such a, such a good contestant. I think he's hitting his tone exactly right. He knows who he is. Uh, and it'll be lovely to see if it does come to fisticuffs with Greg later in the series. Um, remember, if you want the family-friendly versions of Taskmaster, check out Taskmaster Bleeped on all four. Uh, look at the YouTube channel. Go on the store. Do all of that. If you have questions for our future guests, you can email us on taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com. And because we've done it in advance and booked all the guests and all of that sort of stuff, uh, you can get your questions in for the next guest of the Taskmaster podcast, which will be Catherine Parkinson from Series 10. So get your questions in, taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com. We'll be chatting about the third episode of this series, but obviously ask her any question you like about her series of Taskmaster, about her career, her life, that sort of, not personal stuff, but mainly Taskmaster, ideally. So get your questions in and we will see you again next week for another Taskmaster podcast. TMP. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.